a journey as someone who um, was diagnosed with MMN a couple of years ago. I was, I guess, first noticed symptoms um, probably five, six years ago. It's always difficult to tell. Um, first thing I really noticed was I would um, be trying to use a knife and fork and my, I kind of, while I was holding a fork particularly um, in my left hand, I'd find my, I'd just be shaking a little. And I must admit at the time I thought, oh my God, Parkinson's. Um, but you push that to the back of your mind, um, inevitably. You don't go to a doctor because I'm a bloke and we don't do those kind of things. And kind of left it at that for quite some time. And from there, I suppose the next thing I really noticed was a loss of strength in my fingers and um, in my hands. And I started, you know, frighteningly to be, and I know I've said this to many people, the thing that really struck me was that I could no longer hold three pints of beer um, in my two hands. I just did not have the strength. And that was quite disconcerting um, because I like my beer and um, nobody wants to have to make two trips to the bar. Um, but that was I kind of ignored that as well. And I did talk to the doctor, I banged my elbow skiing and I thought, oh, is it all related to that? Had a bit of nerve pain. Um, all of these symptoms are in my left hand. There's nothing going on anywhere else in the body. And, you know, we move on a couple of years and then things got kind of really a bit weird. And I can vividly remember being at work and walking along the corridor and trying to give someone a thumbs up and I couldn't do it and it was pretty evident that br the brain was not speaking properly to my hands and I think from then on um, it felt like things were kind of deteriorating very quickly I would be driving and would suddenly find myself unable to um, move my hand to the gear stick the way I wanted or sometimes not even let loose of it um, I'd be riding my bike and I'd suddenly find I didn't have the strength to um, change gear anymore um, and I was on a plane and trying to put things in the overhead locker and I didn't have the strength and my left shoulder would kind of drop as my arm collapsed that was pretty freaky um, and by this stage I thought okay need to go and see a doctor um, went to the doctors as you do i was lucky i was hugely lucky um the doctor said well if it's a problem with you we think you need a neurologist but um we'll set you up with a hand specialist because he's likely to have a shorter waiting list he will be able to refer you to a neurologist far quicker than me um, that proved to be the case and that was in about the march um, 2019 by the May I was seeing a neurologist and he was um, straight away kind of hooking me up to electrodes and um, testing my nerve conduction um, he was looking at my finger strength which was some of the worst that he'd ever seen and very quickly um, he was starting to think about either CRDP or MMN. He sent me for a um, lumbar puncture, um, spinal tap, and just to check that out. And by this stage, even though we'd only moved on, I think we were now into about the September, October, I'd experienced just started to feel foot drop. Those of you who know it probably recognize the fact that the first thing I, certainly I noticed was this slapping noise from my foot and I thought what is that a slapping noise and just the fact that I'd trip over things a lot more my foot wasn't lifting so took that um, I was lucky um, I can remember from the first neurologist appointment neurologist rang me up a couple of days later and said I've got a um, bunch of specialists coming in on Friday can you uh, come in 
and the answer of course in those circumstances is yes and there must have been about a dozen people um, stood looking at the results of my um, tests prodding and poking me and it was pretty amazing that within about six months um, you know people were telling me no we don't think this is ALS because that's one of the things obviously a lot of us worry about um, as we start to Google our way through our symptoms and I was told fairly quickly that they thought it was MMN and again relatively quickly was told give IVIG a go um, went into the hospital you're never quite sure had a double dose over a couple of days um, felt the usual fatigue and tiredness and a bit of headache and neck ache and that was the week before Christmas in 2019 and I was again incredibly lucky a couple of days later I thought I think there's some pan movement coming back um, I'd completely lost some of my fine motor skills and it felt like they were coming back I didn't want to um, jump the gun though I gave it a couple of days and um, I guess my Christmas present to the family, to my wife that year was that I um, gave them a thumbs up with a hand that hadn't been able to do a thumbs up for a couple of years. Um, that's my kind of story. I am very lucky. I have IVIG only every six weeks. Um, yes, I get tired um, from that, but generally I have seen a significant improvement. Um, from where I was um, and I'm also I get a bit of tingling um, I'm sure I'm I'm sure that's linked I'm never sure sometimes I'm a bit fatigued um, certainly know that when I'm fatigued I feel the tingling more I feel kind of a bit weird in the, the hands and arms but um, generally pretty good so I know that's not the case for everybody out there but um, I guess and that and that's not only just for those that are struggling to get a diagnosis those who are on IVIG and it's not really working for them or their um, side effects are not very good um, a bit bad so and I guess that's why I'm so determined to use the opportunity I've got and the opportunity that IVIG has given me um, to get out there raise awareness of what this condition is raise hopefully um, ultimately a shed load of money for research into it and um, let's see if we can try and find a cure but that's my story um, relatively short and sweet thanks everyone